fundamental theorem. You know, mathematicians don't use those words very often unless the result is really, really important. And the fundamental theorem of algebra is so important that in some form or another, every student, even in high school, learns what the fundamental theorem of algebra has to say. Specifically, it says that if I want to find the solutions to any polynomial equation at all, if it's coefficients or complex numbers, that I never have to look any further than the complex numbers for the roots of that polynomial. We never have to look beyond the complex numbers as a field to find the solutions of polynomials whose coefficients lie in a subfield of the complex numbers. For example, if the coefficients are real for a polynomial, then the solutions of that polynomial equation can be no worse than complex. In other words, as soon as you have i, you have everything you need. And to us, that should be a little bit surprising at this point, because we've seen that in general, we have to work pretty hard to discover a splitting field for a polynomial, a field that contains all the roots of that polynomial. So what is it about the complex numbers that make that field so special? Why is it that the complex numbers get to be algebraically closed? In other words, why does the complex number field contain all of the solutions of polynomial equations whose coefficients were complex? Why do we never need to look past the complex numbers and into a bigger field to find the solutions of polynomials with complex coefficients? A wise mathematician, or maybe it was a snide mathematician, once said that any field of mathematics is only useful insofar as it can provide you with a unique proof of the fundamental theorem of algebra. This theorem can be proved in a whole lot of different ways. But somehow, the way of proving the fundamental theorem of algebra using the tools of algebra, specifically the tools of abstract algebra that we've been building up to this point, is probably the one that uh, is probably better than the others. At least, that's what I happen to think because I've spent the last 12 hours making abstract algebra videos for you. Right? So we want to understand in this video, what is it about the complex numbers that make them so special that the complex number field is algebraically closed? The tools we have at our disposal are really three. First and foremost, we have the Galois correspondence. That all-important theorem in Galois theory that tells us that anything that happens at the level of fields and their subfields something corresponding happens at the level of automorphism groups and their subgroups. And what we'll see when we prove the fundamental theorem of algebra using these tools is we're going to rely very heavily on understanding something about groups and then translating that understanding into an understanding about fields. But then the second ingredient that we're going to need for this proof is a deeper understanding of the structure of finite groups. Specifically, we want to understand what subgroups a finite group is forced to have just by virtue of the order of that finite group. So we'll need a couple of theorems known as Seeloff theorems that can help us to understand the answer to that question, which in a lot of ways is partial converse to Lagrange's theorem. Remember, Lagrange's theorem says that the order of a subgroup has to be a divisor of the order of the whole group. We're going to see some ways of rolling that tape backwards. And then finally, we need to understand what it is about the complex numbers as a field that make them so special and allow us to use the Galois correspondence to then justify why we never need to extend the complex numbers in a non-trivial way to find the roots of polynomials with complex coefficients. So what this is, is, is it's a conspiracy of two different fields of algebra, no pun intended. And the conspiracy is between Galois theory on the one hand, which tells us about the structure of fields, and Seeloff theory on the other hand, which tells us something about the structure of finite groups. First of all, let's look at the different ways to state the fundamental theorem of algebra. The idea again being that we never need to look beyond the complex field to find the roots of polynomials whose coefficients are complex numbers. Somehow the complex numbers are the quote-unquote biggest extension that we can make of, for example, the rationals. And the fundamental theorem of algebra can be stated as the statement the field of complex numbers is algebraically closed. In other words, any polynomial with complex coefficients will have all of its roots be complex. So here's another way to say that. Any polynomial that's not constant, whose coefficients are complex, if it has degree n, then it will have n complex roots. Another way of saying that same thing is to say that every polynomial with complex coefficients will have all of its roots in the field of complex numbers. And we know that there are n roots for a polynomial of degree n, 
because we therefore have to be able to factor it as a product of linear factors, t minus one root, t times another root, and so on and so on, up to t minus the nth root. So we know every polynomial of degree n will have n roots if we count them with multiplicity because we can factor it in exactly this way. But an even simpler statement that's equivalent is that every non-constant polynomial with, constant co with complex coefficients will have at least one root, which is a complex number. Because if it has one complex root, then we can show by induction that it has all of its roots in the complex field. If it has one root, then we can factor t minus that root out of it and get a factorization, which is t minus that root times some polynomial of degree n minus one. But then if that polynomial is guaranteed to have a complex root, then we can factor t minus that root out of that factor and get a factor of degree n minus two, which then we'll say also must have a root, and just by induction, we can factor the whole thing. To say it in the more sophisticated language of abstract algebra, we can say that every non-constant polynomial with complex coefficients will have the complex field as its splitting field. In other words, we never have to build a splitting field for a polynomial with complex coefficients that is any larger than the complex field itself. After all, being a splitting field is equivalent, by definition, to containing all of the roots of that polynomial. Yet another way to say that is that we can't have an irreducible polynomial of complex coefficients that is not of degree 0 or degree 1. If we did have an irreducible polynomial of degree 2 or greater, then that would be a, a contradiction of the fact that there are no polynomials that don't have roots inside of the complex field. So if the degree of our polynomial is greater than or equal to 2, having roots in the complex field means that we can in fact factor it in a non-trivial way. So the only irreducible polynomials over the complex field have degree 0 or degree 1. And there's one more restatement of this, and this is the one that we're actually going to prove. The restatement is that any time I have a finite extension of the complex numbers, that finite extension is trivial. In other words, if E is a finite extension of C, then E must be equal to C. Why is that equivalent? Well, let's suppose that we did have a non-trivial extension of E over C. That would mean that there exists some irreducible polynomial over C that has degree greater than or equal to 2. But, as we just said, one statement of the fundamental theorem of algebra is that there is no irreducible polynomial over C that has degree greater than or equal to 2. And so this is a statement that we're actually going to prove, that every finite extension of the complex numbers is trivial. Because if that were not true, then there would be some irreducible polynomial over the complex numbers of degree greater than or equal to 2. And that would mean that there exists at least one root of that polynomial which does not belong to the complex field, which is a contradiction of the fundamental theorem of algebra. So in the next video, we're going to embark on the proof that every finite extension of the complex numbers is trivial by, first of all, looking at all the facts about fields and groups and about the real and complex number fields that we're going to need in order to succeed in our proof.